inadvertently created reversals or negative effects rather than your desired effects. Which is, you're starting with a very tough question. Because first it means, am I aware of them? And then second, what do I learn and change once I'm aware of them? So I'd like to invite you to turn to somebody next to you and have a conversation about your experience. It might be your institution, it might be your project, it might be you. And in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to share the insights that you gleaned from your discussion partner. And then we can start bringing those together and see how those insights are your experience. Is that a fair ask? Okay. Anyone want to be brave and start us off? Tell us the first person. Ah, Nikita. Okay. Okay. Oh, so we start with our main chair. I had very interesting talk to discuss because I had the talk with Jayati and I raised that very issue which I have seen in my 20 years in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Kenya, in Mozambique. It is that we as a donors, we have been supporting the education and now we have, at least in Kenya and Mozambique, like the primary education for girls and boys are more or less equal and we have much more educated youth than before. But the impact to the agriculture in a way has been very negative. In Kenya, we are saying that the average age of the farmers is over 60. So the young people would like to have a white collar work and not coming to work in, in agriculture. And if uh, Jayati was telling that uh, the baby has difficulties in access to the assets, it's the same for you. If they don't have the land, and normally the, the fathers keep the land in their name, they can't get the assets. And then we don't have a young people in, in that house. And it's too heavy work for them, they prepare something else. And I understood the same situation is also in so this is one aspect to, to raise in there, so also the youth, not just the women, which we should be looking at. Thank you, Jayanti. Um, you raised, I want to pick up on a few points, because you raised uh, an issue around reducing unpaid work and um, the whole point about changing the practice of consumption. I think we can agree that generally, uh, there's a shift towards labor saving um, in, in the kitchen. So we all want to cook faster. We, are, we all want to do less in the kitchen. So our lives are busy. And then that's, I think if, if we're in the Western world, we're adopting more recreational kitchen uh, practices. We want to be in the kitchen cook. But, but in general, in the world, there's this, this shift to um, labor saving. And then you mentioned the consequence to less uh, nutrition as well. Um, one of the challenges I'm starting to think of in a bit of a dilemma is that a lot of our nutrition interventions with donors um, actually introduces more work in the kitchen. And I don't think we actually go to that extent where we're, we're, we're talking about you know, promoting kitchen gardening, um, we, they wanna, we want them to diversify their food, so keep doing the foods you do, but add a vegetable dish, and add another dish, um, and also uh, issue with special foods for you know, the six to 24 month old. So after he's done cooking the, the dish for the family, um, then prepare a, a iron fortified cereal for, for the, the kids. And well, all of these are adding additional burden. burden. Uh, and so I feel like a lot of our approaches, while well, they're very, uh, they're very technological approaches to nutrition, trying to aim to solve very specific nutrition issues, and they're all well founded in some good results. But at the end of the day, I feel like we're actually increasing the burden in the kitchen. And we're not actually going in and redesigning the kitchen. Most of these people have one fire pit, one pot. They don't have the luxury of having a stove with four pots that go off at the same time. And, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just struggling. So, do we have, do we say there's an actual correlation between increasing nutrition in the kitchen and increasing work? Or do we, can we actually find solutions that uh, increase nutrition but reduce the work? I, I don't know if you found this. Thank you. 
mention that, let's say, uh, ensure that school-going children at least have access to, you know, whatever mortified, etc., etc. You'd have to have a different set of interventions for, let's say, the younger children. But it doesn't always have to be household-based. I think that the trouble is that we make everything household-based, but it basically comes back to the women and the girls in the household. So we have to think of, let's say, community kitchens that, you know, provide some basic things or, uh, or certain, you know, not the packaged food one, which is the one that a lot of donors are going for. I and mean, I mean, some not that. And let's say India is actively lobbying and possibly, possibly not successful in introducing packaged foods rather than home cooked or ready cooked food. Uh, you know, so we have to think of the community uh, or different ways of providing it. So, two key words that I'm pulling out here first, think about it. <laughs> And second, not just household basic, like you're actually saying look at the different points to intervene in the system, not just the obvious one. Okay, good. Thank you. If I can get into the discussion, I think uh, we can be also um, uh, optimistic and be syncretic because in most traditional foods, including Mediterranean, Indian, even most of the African, are uh, already been addressed, but as she pointed out, they are not really models today. On the other hand, we have technology today, like the fringe, which is incredible, what changed the world from the, 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 the possibility, and also some technology. So there is some technology that could be very friendly, okay, but building up on what is in the tradition. And that, that does uh, require a lot of cooking as well. You know, it is a different approach to food and to technology. So we're blending the traditional and the syncretic. Okay, there was someone over here. Yeah. And then I'll then we'll come over there. I'm going to come here and then I'll take it. Thanks. Um, I'm Paul Sedley from IAO, Technical Officer. Oh, good uh, practice. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we were discussing with my partner here about your questions. And uh, actually, me myself, I had a question to you. Uh, I just came back from Pakistan two days ago, where the IAU is implementing a project in a region uh, bordering with Afghanistan, so a very traditional region, and actually we're having a component on women. Um, I mean, we are doing very little, of course, but how can we manage in such a situation where we have uh, also social, uh, I mean, how can, how can I say, I mean, the, the society itself is not maybe ready to have a gender empowerment. So how can we as international agencies uh, deal with this kind of situation? Thanks. Okay, wait one second, I'm going to take the mic. Um, okay, I just have to let you know we have a battery problem before we can, so we're going to do a little running around. And I promised over here and then I'll come in, okay? Do you want to answer that or do you want to have that? Let's come over here and then we'll leave it together. Thank you. My name is Monique Callan. I'm a senior policy advisor at the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, responsible for food security and private sector development. And that's actually part of the background to the question. You alluded in some cases to, let's say, the role of the private sector and the role of different private sector-led activities. But I didn't get a full picture yet of um, how we can engage with the private sector so that the private sector will actually make a difference in terms of um, reaching out to women farmers and um, uh, influencing, positively influencing consumption, consumption patterns. Uh, John and I had a little debate here and um, we, uh, uh, John said, well, you know, if a woman is leaving a company, it's already a, a you know, a plus point. Um, I disagreed. To some extent, sorry about that. <laughs> and I said, well, that doesn't always work that way. But the question that came up when we were discussing was more like, um, how do you engage women f uh, from the local level, let's say, starting at the small scale farmer level, and going through these processing functions that women are very much involved in and often running small scale companies? How do we engage with them to make sure that the, the private sector gets the message, let's say, of how to, let's say, effectively involve women in uh, healthy food systems. So, uh, so I'm going to give this one to you because, interestingly, I think they're both cultural questions. Yeah. 
on, on uh, you know, investing mainstream in gender in our development project is because it makes economic sense. You know, and I, 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 you know, it, I appreciate your, your intervention and your concept notes. We're not investing in women because they're vulnerable and, and they're victims, but because it, it helps your economy grow, basically. It makes economic sense. Uh, my colleague from FAO will, will, will tell you about this beautiful infographic that they've done. An increase in $10 of, in women's income brings about the same positive impact of an increase in $110 in men's income. That's one. It reduces, <laughs> it reduces the proportion of malnourishment by 17%. Eight, given access to the technologies and to the resources uh, as men, they produce 20%, 26% more quality and more than men. You know, this, are, this is the, the only reason why we invest uh, in mainstream in gender. Okay, how to answer your second question, how do we do it better? Somebody mentioned theory of change yesterday, uh, and uh, Nikita also mentioned it in his concluding remarks yesterday. It's by engendering your theory of change. I mean, that's, that's the only, I mean, so you have a theory of change for your development goals. There is some impact you want to grow, grow, grow to, and um, you just, you know, include, incorporate gender in your theory of change. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Let's figure out why. Go for it. Find somebody interesting to talk. 